Okay, so this will be just a quick, really quick meeting. Um, we are going to show a couple of tiny things. Um, first of all, how do we organize the test net? Um, what kind of milestones we are going to have? Uh, how to know when the test net will be updated? And then as a second part, we will try to show how to compile it uh, a Goatrium client uh, working with the eWASM testnet and syncing it with the testnet. So I will turn on screen sharing. Let me know if, if it works. Yes, I can see your screen. All right, so ewasm.ethereum.org is the, the main landing page uh, for the testnet. It has a really beautiful logo and a couple of different links on the bottom. Um, so the, the guide itself uh, goes to our testnet repository, which explains how to connect to the testnet. Um, it will also explain how to deploy contracts, um, et cetera. Um, and that's what we're going to have a look at later today. And the Explorer itself, of course, goes to the Blockchain Explorer, which um, is able to show a lot of different things. Uh, the Studio is just a tiny tool to, to deploy contracts. Uh, and the other two should be self-explanatory. Um, just to have a quick look at the Explorer. I mean, there's, there's nothing really you know, surprising about the Explorer, it, it is just a regular Explorer. The only interesting part here could be uh, this contract, the Sentinel contract, uh, which is a system contract and it is doing validation and metering on uh, deployed contracts. Um, okay, let's see this single contract here. I believe this should be a WebAssembly contract, which has been deployed recently and one can see the actual, so that, that above should be the, the WebAssembly bytecode, uh, but the WebAssembly bytecode can also be represented as a text format, uh, which is called a WAST format. And this is, uh, you know, what the, the bytecode contains. Um, and it's also possible to see the, the storage entries for a given contract. Okay, I don't wanna go too deep into the Explorer myself. Uh, maybe Hugo, uh, wants to show us around later. So the way we organize the testnet itself is through a GitHub project board, uh, which can be found on GitHub, just going to the UASM project and then clicking on the projects tab. And here you can see three different milestones uh, we have in progress. Um, the first one on the Bottom is the one for today. Uh, we plan to make another update to the testnet in like three weeks time and then a month from there. Um, on this single, the current today's milestone, uh, here are some items which we haven't fully completed yet, but on the right there are all the items which we did complete. Now the goal with this, um, project listing is that we have a fixed date for the release and we are narrowing down the scope as we get closer to the release, uh, prioritizing issues which, which are more important and removing the, uh, the ones which would be just nice to have. Okay, uh, are there any questions so far or should we just move on, on to installing a client? Um, Alex, just to clarify the, so when there's a release on the 10th of December, um, the we'll start with a, a new chain, a new new genesis, so everything will be wiped. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So the plan, at least for now, is to restart the testnet of each each milestone, um, because having like hard forks would be an extra unnecessary complexity we don't really need right now. Um, and it should also help us to, you know, should we have 
um, you know, should someone find some issues in the test net, we would just get rid of those issues and, and deploy the fixes. Okay, then let's just quickly look into how a client can be installed. And well, actually I can go back to the main page and click on the guide on the main page. which brings us to the main readme, uh, which is under uh, heavy improvements, uh, undergoing heavy improvements right now. Uh, but there's already a part right here, uh, ending a note to the testnet, uh, which explains step-by-step step how somebody can connect uh, a fresh node. Now here are the, the basic prerequisites. Uh, which are needed. Uh, important to mention is the version of Go and the version of CMake. Otherwise, the regular C++ compiler is also required, but nothing really fancy. And here are the actual steps. Um, I think I will just change the screen sharing to the terminal. And we'll just copy these items one by one to the terminal. Um, but basically, first we need to build our own version of GoEthereum, uh, which can be found at this location. And with every single milestone, we are having a different tag. Um, so it's, it's easy to distinguish which uh, version of the testnet somebody tries to build a client for and connect to. So the first step is building this GoEthereum client, uh, which has some specific features made by us. Hopefully, those features are going to be merged back into the official Go Ethereum uh, soon enough, and then this stuff will be obsolete, um, maybe with the next milestone, but it's not fully up to us. The second step is to build Hera, which is a eWASM VM. And this, this is a C++ piece of code. That's why uh, we need a C++ compiler. Um, the next step is downloading the Genesis and setting up uh, the, the local configuration for Go Ethereum, and then lastly is the step for connecting to the actual testnet. Okay, I'm gonna change the screen sharing to the terminal. Is the terminal visible? Yes. So you should see eWASM dash workstation two. Is there prompt? Okay, let's just create a directory here for the test net. So of course this uh, machine has, this is a Linux machine, but it also works on, on Mac OS without any issues. This machine has all the prerequisites installed. Now, while I'm going through this, um, I think it would be a good time to, because this is gonna take like three, four minutes in total. It's probably gonna be a good time. If you guys have any questions, please ask them now. So access this milestone one will be updated, right? When, uh, on the 10th December. Yes, we are going to have milestone two. Um, the instructions likely gonna be the same, except using this okay. yeah. milestone one, they're gonna be milestone two. Okay, let's, let's copy the build binary to here. And so we have GoEthereum built. Oh, sorry. Did I? Yeah. Yeah, so we have GoEthereum built. Um, now we can build uh, Hera.
Uh, Alex, why aren't you downloading the binary release of Hera? All right, I could do that. Yeah, because I've been doing this mostly on Mac and we don't have a, a release for the Mac. Oh, okay. We do have a release for Linux, so I could do that now. But I think it takes like two minutes uh, with on this computer to build. Yeah, and so once that same uh, eWASM testnet, the milestone one is going to be the release tag for for both Hera for Geth. Um, so that way, when when we uh, do an update to milestone two, then you just change that uh, so you can use that consistent uh, get get tag across all the repos. Yeah, I suppose that's the power of Go. It, it took like 30 seconds to build compared to C++. Maybe once uh, Wagon is ready, we can just tell people to use wagon will be the default instructions. What do you think? <laughs> it would be 10% of the time to install a node. Yeah, and wagon, by the way, is, um, is the goal implementation of a WebAssembly interpreter and you know, Guillaume has been working on um, using hooking up the geth plus wagon uh, to the testnet. So I see we also have uh, Harley on the call. Um, do you have any any questions? Oh, hey, Alex. Uh, no, I'm just I'm just hanging out. Jason asked me to be on the call to see what you guys are up to. So. Yeah, we're up to compiling stuff here. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> it's fun. Um, but I hadn't heard of Wagon, so I'll have to check that out. It's pretty cool. Hey, Alex, oh, one more thing. S sorry for interrupting. So inside the Go Ethereum uh, folder, we will do the Git clone of Hera, right? After they make Git. Um, yeah, I moved out to a different directory. So just to scroll uh, no, back up. I, I mean, my system is a bit slower than yours, so that's why. Okay. Yeah, so it's up there. Um, so we downloaded Go Ethereum, we built it, uh, yeah. and I just made a copy of the there. I just made a copy of the build file <laughs> and placed it yeah. into the testnet directory. And now we're compiling Hera. Yeah. Almost finished. Yeah, this seemed actually to be faster on on Mac. Yeah, maybe to expand on Wagon a bit. Wagon is a Go implementation of uh, WebAssembly. Uh, it's an interpreter 
and we have Guillaume in the team who's also a member of the GoEthereum team. Uh, and he also works on Whisper, uh, but he also works on, on eWASM. And he's integrating Wagon into GoEthereum and adding the, the, the tiny piece of code uh, to, to support eWASM in GoEthereum using Wagon. Um, it actually is working, uh, but we had a couple of uh, we had a couple of changes in the interfaces, uh, which Wagon had uh, no chance yet to to be updated to. Um, but I think for the next milestone, it definitely will be fully working, and this process will be much quicker. Okay, now we have Hera built. Um, let's just make a copy of that. Is it here? Yeah. Okay, so now in our testnet directory, we have the GoEthereum binary and we have Hera. So the next step is to download the Genesis, uh, which is also listed in the readme. And now we can initialize all the data for GoEthereum. I missed the init. Okay, and now comes the, the big command of actually pulling all this together. So all of this is actually listed in the readme. I'm just typing it up because uh, it seems easier than copying. So this part here is like the, the only special part uh, which is needed. Um, in case of using Wagon, um, the lib, lib here part won't be there, but the other parameters will be there at least initially. Um, but apart from this single dash dash vm dot e uh, parameter, everything else is the same, uh, just like you would use uh, go Ethereum. Let's just enable RPC, but we won't enable mining. Oh, actually, I forgot one tiny thing because uh, we haven't updated the readme yet to deal with that. So now we actually just run into like limitation of on in Go Ethereum how uh, the peer to peer networking works. Um, if we just specify the boot node, which is the, the mining node uh, we have on the test net, um, and we don't specify no discover, then the, the client works, uh, but it will try to connect to any other random Ethereum node. And there's a lot of extra peer-to-peer -peer traffic, um, you know, connecting, trying to connect to all the, the nodes on the regular network, uh, but due to the network ID being different, it, it's just a useless connection. Um, but if we specify no discover, then even despite specifying a boot node, it won't really connect to the boot nodes. So one way around this is, so I'm actually not executing this one. One way around this is adding a static nodes uh, file, uh, which have to be placed into this initialized directory within the get uh, directory, and that has to be name static dash nodes that JSON. And it is an array of, it's a, it's a JSON file and it's an array of the E node uh, like identifiers. So this E node came from the readme um, and we will also include a static nodes JSON file into the readme so one can just copy and paste it. And now if I copy the command I had over there, then everything should work magically.
Woohoo, I think it worked. So if you keep, keep waiting here a bit, then all the incoming blocks should also show up. Yep, I think it's, it did work. Um, so, I mean, that, that's, that's it from me. Um, I'm not sure if anybody has any questions now. All right, and I don't think we have anything more to show at least right now. Um, but we plan to have the next community call um, just right after the release of Milestone 2. Um, so we will communicate the date much earlier than we did uh, for this one. Um, and probably there will be a, a bit more interaction regarding how to uh, deploy contracts and how to how to deploy EVM contracts and how to deploy EWASM contracts and how to interact between them. So that is the, the plan for the next milestone and for the next community call. Okay, then I think we can, if there are no questions, we can conclude this meeting and hopefully it's gonna be up on YouTube. Um, so you, people can can have a look at how to how to deploy the, the client. Thank you all for joining. Alex. Today. Okay. Yeah, Hugo, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know if you want to, or you want me to show how to deploy like a simple contract to testnet. Um, if you're ready to do that and you want to show it, then please, of course, uh, I'm going to stop my sharing and you can take it over. Sure. Alex, uh, I have just asked you one question on the chat. Uh, I don't know whether this question is good for or not. I mean, this is supposed to be get uploaded on YouTube. That's why I just... I mean, I'm not sure I fully understand the question. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can, you can ask any kind of question on this call. It's really up to you. Yeah, yeah. so what are the community projects, uh, I mean, you are expecting uh, to build something around eWASM? So there is a project called as uh, uh, Explorer, WASM Explorer, I mean, for the web assembly. It, it, for eWASM, I have seen that yeah, you guys have built, uh, but uh, that's, I mean, just like a bare bone, so for the web assembly, they have implemented for C++, Rust, and uh, yeah, C++ and Rust also. So uh, is there something that can be built around this uh, eWASM, similarly just like WASM? Okay, looking at the link, I think this is the earlier version of what is uh, now called WebAssembly Studio. Yeah. And yeah, um, yeah. the WebAssembly Studio is, is the new version of this. Um, and we were looking into integrating it into our pipeline. Mm -hmm. And one way to integrate it is um, having an actual language in it, which has uh, some of the extensions to natively support the UASM. And mm -hmm. the only one which works easily with uh, WebAssembly Studio is AssemblyScript. Um, mm -hmm. So we have a project in place to um, extend assembly script uh, with eWASM support. And by that, I mean that <clears throat> there would be built-in uh, helpers to, to create contracts and it would generate all the ABI and all the, all the other things needed to be a contract. <coughs> and there would be no manual work required. Um, so hopefully that's, that's gonna be released um, you know, sometime in the near future. Um, 
if if anybody is interested to to work on that, that is a TypeScript slash JavaScript project, and mm -hmm. we definitely would welcome people to to help out on that. So it will be mostly like a fiddle, just like JS fiddle, uh, where you will gonna write uh, the smart contract in one language, and you will get the you want some contract uh, on the other side, right? Yeah, and it, um, I mean, it's only for assembly scripts. So one could write assembly script um, using WebAssembly Studio, compile it as a contract and then uh, deploy from the, uh, from the same interface. Okay. That, that is the end goal. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you, that was a good question. Um, Hugo, if you wanna go then, Please go ahead. Sure. sure. Um, can you see my screen? I can. Okay, good. Um, well, as Alex said, as Alex said uh, in the main EWASM website, we have this um, access to this tool, which is called EWASM Studio. And this tool allows us to deploy contracts to the EWASM testnet. Um, so in order to do that, we have we need to have uh, MetaMask installed, the MetaMask extension, and also we need to configure MetaMask to connect to the to the eWASM testnet. Uh, we can do that uh, going to settings, and here in new RPC URL, we have to specify eWASM.ethereum.org and A545 as support. So we save this configuration and now we are connected to the to the eWASM testnet. Um, sometimes when you connect to a new to a new network in MetaMask, you can see in the history, you can see other um, transactions. So I recommend to go and, and reset the account so you don't have any problems with, with the nonce. So you can do that again in settings, you can reset your account. So when, once you have connected to the, to the testnet in MetaMask, you will need some, some eWASM ETH in order to submit transactions. So to do that, we have also in the main um, eWASM Web page, we have access to the faucet. And here, uh, the faucet detects your, your MetaMask address, and you can request one Ether from the faucet. So I'm going to request one Ether here. And now we can see that we have uh, a transaction which is sending us one Ether. We also can Take a look here in the Explorer for pending transactions. Right now it says there is no pending transaction, so we may have this transaction here, yeah. We have uh, the faucet. The faucet is sending us one Ether, which we requested. So if I go to MetaMask again, I can see that now I have one it was an Ether. So now I'm able to to use eWASM Studio. Um, eWASM Studio, in eWASM Studio, you can send transactions to an address. If you specify here an address for a contract, you can call that contract. And you can send some data here or some value. But if you leave this address empty, uh, what the studio is going to do is going to deploy the was code you write in here or you copy in here. So right now we're going to deploy a very simple contract, which is this was code. We don't specify any address here, so we want to deploy the contract. We set any value here. So this is a very simple contract. It only um, it's reading the the current block number and it stores the block number in the key 88 of the storage 
and then it uses a uh, storage load to read the same value from this key and then it is stored store the same value in this uh, new key 99 so I'm going to deploy this contract. When I submit the transaction, it opened MetaMask. So here I just have to confirm the transaction. And if and Studio shows the transaction number. So if I go again to pending transactions, there is no pending transaction, so maybe this also already processed. So here we have the transaction. MetaMask confirmed we have the transaction. So if we go to the transaction, we can see that this transaction is deploying a new contract. And here we have the contract address. We can go to this new contract address we can check the code. Here we have the WebAssembly bytecode for the contract. And this bytecode is, um, from this bytecode, the Explorer is, uh, is actually getting the, the WAS code. But the difference here between this WAS code and the WAS code we initially um, deployed is that the Sentinel contract is adding these new statements. Uh, for example, it adds the, the use gas, and for each one of these um, branches, it is uh, actually charging some gas. So right now we have a uh, nodding in the storage. We can use Iwasm Studio to call this contract. If we set here, the, the contract address and say we can send some, some value. And this will call the contract and this code which will be executed. So let's submit the transaction. Confirm, it gets the transaction received. Here is a, as a pending transaction. Now it is processed. You can see it here in the in recent transactions. And if we go again to this contract, we see that there is a new recent trans transaction calling the contract. So this, co this code gets executed. And now we have uh, the storage changed. Uh, now for for these uh, two keys, we have the the block number in which the in which the transaction was processed. So yeah, that will be all by my side. Just wanted to show how to deploy this simple contract and and how to use these. Um, it was some studio tool to do it and also to clarify how to like configure metamask because sometimes sometimes um, um yeah it's, it's one of the common issues for example this uh the nonce issue so yeah that's it for me oh well, thanks Hugo. i want to point out on the uh <laughs> on that contract storage actually i think the endianness might be wrong or the the value there of the block number, um, yeah, that's uh, well, it's a very large block number instead of uh, at the end of the two hundred fifty six bit value. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll sort that out later. Thank you, Hugo. I think it was really great. So do we, do we have any questions or should we go?
conclude. Nothing from my side. All right, then thank you everyone for joining today. And let's have another call in a month, month from now. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, bye.